Hello friends and welcome to Decorate Your Life. Today I will be sharing with you a tall explosion box mini album tutorial which is my design team project for ks for You. It's great to be back with another tutorial specifically made just for you. The items that I used in the making of this Tall Explosion Box mini album are the following. Black Lace, style number B900. Bronze Emblem Filigree, style number A194. Black Butterflies, style number A249. Flower Charm, style number A958. Black Fabric Roses, style number A1047. Blue Roses, style number A222. And bronze filigrees, style number A420. You will find a list of these items in the description area below along with the link to the store. Now, I must give credit where credit is due. The dimensions to the base of this tall explosion box mini album were provided by Crafters Corner India .com. I will be leaving a link to Crafters Corner India in the description area below. I hope you enjoy my tutorial and it is a lengthy tutorial so please by all means add it to your personal playlist. And ladies, don't forget to visit ks4u.net. As you can see, they have a plethora of embellishments and trims that fits pretty much any crafting style. And as always, I thank you for watching my videos. Please thumbs up if you enjoy my tutorials. And don't forget to comment and hey, subscribe if you haven't already done so. I have plenty of these to come. And uh, yeah, go ahead and check out my blog post at www.decorateyourlife.com. And don't forget to sign up to my newsletter. I have something big in the works. I'll see y'all real soon, okay? Bye now. You will cut one piece at four and a half by three and a half inches. Then you will cut two pieces of cardstock at seven by three and a half inches and score at the half inch mark. And then you will cut two additional pieces of cardstock at seven by four and a half inches and score them at the half inch mark. Now that you have cut the pieces to your base of your Explosion Box mini album, it is time to start piecing them together. So you're going to use strong double sided tape to piece your flaps, the flaps that fold down together to the actual bottom base. Notice how I'm using my Martha Stewart scoreboard to help keep my cardstock in place and straight. I highly recommend that you use this method as it helps to give your project a well polished look. time to cover up your explosion box mini album with some pretty scrapbook paper. The collection that I have chosen to use in this project is by Graphic 45 and it's called the Artisan Collection. And the measurements that I use to cut my scrapbook papers with is um, I just basically take the original measurements on 
the side which I'm cutting for and I just go down a quarter of an inch on each side. In other words, if, I'm, if my original size is four and three and a half, then I will cut my scrapbook paper down to three and three quarters by three and one quarter. To do a recap on everything that I have done so far, we have cut our four pieces for the base and we have put it together. Now, I chose to use regular cardstock for this Explosion Box mini album. If you wish, you can use chipboard. You can go ahead and make your base with chipboard and, of course, allowing... Um, allowing spaces for the, uh, whatchamacallit, this part over here, the hinges, I guess you would call it. And, of course, you would be covering up with your black cardstock. But for this project, I decided to use regular um, cardstock. And, of course, by adding the Graphic 45 cardstock to the front and to the back and to the uh, bottom, in the top pages, it does make it stronger. Now, for the binding, I decided to use the Kathy Orta Hidden Hinge Binding System. So because Kathy Orta's Hidden Hinge is copyrighted, I am not even going to attempt to make a tutorial on the Hidden Hinge Binding System. What I will do, however, is I will link this video to her original tutorial of the Hit and Hinge Binding System so that you can follow her if you choose to use this type of binding system on any of your mini album projects. Now, what I decided to do was um, six pages. I can comfortably fit six pages on this Explosion Box mini album and I'm making graduated pages, meaning that the one in the back is going to be the tallest page, and of course the one in the front is going to be the uh, shortest page. So, my dimensions for this graduated pages are the following. The last page is going to measure 4 by 5 16 wide by 6 inches tall. The next one is going to measure 4 by 5 16 wide by five and a half inches tall and basically they're all going to follow the same width obviously the width here is four and five sixteenth inches wide and this is five inches tall so in other words I am going down a half an inch on every single page until I get to the very front page what I also wanted to show you in this tutorial is that you don't have to have a cameo or a silhouette or a scanning cut. You don't have to have a die cutting machine to make a pretty mini album or any pretty uh, paper crafting projects. This mini album is going to have nothing but decorated, decorated pages uh, made with punches, paper punches. For example, this paper punch right here is from a Martha Stewart paper punch. This paper punch right here, the corners right here, is from a paper studio corner paper punch. If you could see that. This paper punch that you see right here is also from a Martha Stewart paper punch. And this paper punch that you see right here, this pretty design, is also from a Martha Stewart paper punch. 
And over here, I am just basically repeating what I've, uh, this same paper punch right along here. In the next few clips, you will see how I cut and build and put together these pocket pages to my Explosion Box mini album. Thank you.
When you're constructing your pocket pages and if you use double-sided tape like I do in this project, it is always a good idea to add a small bead of glue right on the edge of your tape, double-sided tape. And the reason why you do this is that if you don't glue your paper right along that side, then you run the risk of your tags or your photo mats getting stuck in that double-sided tape when you put your tags in the pockets. So as a precautionary measure, just run a little bit of glue right along it, right alongside it, and you'll be good to go. Now that we have every single page in our hit and hinge binding system, we can begin with the um, photo mats. Now, I'm going to place one photo mat per pocket, but I will show you how I do how my dimensions for the photo mat in a little bit. I want to show you that when I fussy cut this, this part. I left this part here and this part here and cut it right along right along here so that I could score this part and fold it over and in the fold over I applied the double sided tape okay so that I can make a dimensional figure right along there and then I cut out this bird here and this picture here and I put them right along the sides right along there and now for my photo mats because every single page these are pocket pages by the way because every single page is different I decided to keep my photo mats the same kind of like give it a uniform look here are some of the photo mats that I have cut. As you can see, they're all the same width, and the width of my photo mat is going to be from here to here, three and a quarter inches. Now, yours may be differently. It all depends on whether or not you decided to add glue or um, double-sided tape to the sides. Now, remember, if you add double-sided tape, Make sure that you add a, a thin bead of glue so that your photo mats or tags, whenever you're doing a project with a pocket, if you don't add that little bead of glue along the sides and at the bottom, you run the risk of your tag or your photo mat getting stuck in the pocket, okay? Um, as you saw in the previous video clips, I did a double-sided tape at the bottom, then a thin bead of glue, and glue on the sides. Okay, so these are my photo mats, and I decided to keep them all the same paper. The paper that I'm using them is also from the Artisan Stock Collection, and this one is called Craftsmanship number 4501108. Alrighty. So this one obviously is going to go in the tallest pocket, which is this one, right along there. They don't have to be perfect right now because I'm going to do more. Let's see, this one goes here and this one goes in here. And this one goes in here. Now as far as how high you want to make these, the um, photo mats, it's all up to you. 
and I will show you in this ex excerpt, I believe this is the one that goes in here, how I go about on deciding what height I'm going to do in my photo mat. So, okay, let's go ahead and get started with that part. Let me move this. Okay, this is the part where your scraps from cutting all these down come in handy. That way you don't have to cut any new sheets and save them for a different project. Now remember, each one of them, each one of my photo mats has to be three and a quarter inches in width. So I'm going to cut this one three and a quarter inch. And now what I have to do is decide how high it needs to be. Let me do right about there. I just placed the mark of where I would like it to go. Okay. And this is pretty much the height of this one. All righty. Let me put these down, and I'm going to take my paper, and I'm going to take it from here, move this out of my way. And I'm going to down here so I could see better. And this is just eye measuring, ladies. <clears throat> I'm going to put a mark there, and I'm going to put a mark there. So that way I know where my marks are, and I am going to cut right inside my mark. Take my trusty paper trimmer. I'm going to take my circle punch. This is just a regular circle punch by Paper Studio. Whoops. And this is a one inch circle punch, by the way. And I'm going to bring my corner right on there. Let me make sure that I have it on right. Okay and chump. Got one. Once again, my corner right there and chump. Oops, was I off frame? I'm sorry. There, am I on frame now? Chump. And chump. Okay. So now I'm going to take some double-sided tape and this is that 99 cent double-sided tape that y'all can get at Tuesday morning and I have already done a review on this double-sided tape and it's okay for projects such as these but it's not the best tacky tape that money can buy you know it's one of those things uh, you get what you pay for this was only 99 cents versus one of these that go for five dollars okay when you're applying your pocket pages to your hinges and when you're applying your hinges to your mini album you use this your score tape you use the good one. You're not going to use the flimsy ones because then it's all going to fall apart on you. But when adhering something like this onto your cardstock, it's okay to use the cheap tape. I also use that 99 cent roll whenever I'm working with my washi tape because you know, as you know, 
washi tape has the adhering power of spit. <laughs> I like saying that. <laughs> so what I do is I apply this double-sided tape on my project where the washi tape is going to go and then I add the washi tape on top of it and it holds. So let me bring this down here so that I can be straight. Yeah, let me bring it down one minute. I just got to be able to see what I'm doing. Alrighty, and I will try to stay. Oh, I was forgetting something. Ah, even though I already have tape on it, I forgot to ink the edges. And it's just a simple ink to make it look vintage. Don't have to go overboard on it. And there we go. This is our tag for our photo mat that's going to go in this pocket right there. See? And you can still see the beauty of the paper punch, that design. So we have one more tag to build, to put together, and that's for this one right here. This one goes over here, like so. So now that we have all of our photo mats made and in each one of the pockets, you may wonder, so how are we to remove these photo mats? Some of them may be difficult to remove. And for that, we're going to add tabs. There are several different punches that you can purchase if you already don't have one to make tabs. What I have decided to do is I'm going to be using these rubber uh, epoxy stickers. I'm going to be making circular tabs for each and every single one of these paper uh, pages, photo mats. So for five and six okay and now we're gonna take our sticker sheet all you gotta do is put this here and then you just drop it in that's all you do see that that's all you do so let me continue Dropping these in. Put one down like so. And just drop it in. There we go. There we go. Five. Six, what should I do? One, two, three. You know what? I think that the middle placement looks best. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a middle placement. Since I like how they look with a tab in the middle, that's what I've decided to do. I'm going to go ahead and glue my tab right along the middle. The glue that I'm using is this one right here. I really like this glue a lot. And we are going to apply some in the area. 
and then it's going to go right along the middle. And that is my tab. I'm going to hold it there for a second, for a moment, to ensure sticking it there okay press real good for a moment and try to do it as clean as possible even though glue runs clear you still run the risk of getting lines and whatnot over here so that's one Okay, now that the tabs are dry, I went ahead and added every single uh, picture mat to its pocket, and look how pretty it looks. It's so pretty. I love it. And let me turn the page this way. And it's going to be real easy to pull these out, and at the same token, you can use these to help you flip your pages. Look at that. Look at that. Don't you love it? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And these are so super cool. I love it. You can easily put it back in its pocket and just line it up. Isn't that gorgeous? So now that pretty much we're done with the inside, unless later on I decide to go back in, I'm thinking about doing a belly band here. Not quite sure just yet, but I'm thinking about adding a belly band here and maybe something else over here. But um, I'm still thinking about it. So, But anyways, now let's go ahead and get started with the cover. Okay? Okay, so for the lid, we're going to take a piece of cardstock and we're going to cut it to 7.5 by 8.5. <clears throat> That's seven and a half by eight and a half. Okay, so now we're going to score at one and seven eighths all around. Ah. So now what we're going to do is we're going to fold our paper at the measurements. <clears throat> Yeah. 
Here we go. <coughs> and we're going to cut right along this line, like so. And try to get it as straight as you possibly can. I have a hard time cutting a straight line. So we're going to cut like so. And this little line, we are going to bring, cut it at an angle. And the reason why we're cutting it at an angle is so that when we close our papers and we're putting it together, this doesn't... Um, conflict with this part right here. Okay, so now we go and do the other one. Now what I'd like to do at this point, before I tape everything together, I'm going to go ahead and add the papers on the back and in the front. The papers that I'm going to be using are from here. This is going to be my inside papers and let's see, my inside cardstock. I keep calling it papers. How funny. Just listen to me. So just basically eye measuring. <clears throat> And we cut like so. So that's the inside of my cover and we're going to do the same thing for the outside. We're going to tackle this area, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so now that we have all of our papers uh, adhered into place, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put the double sided tape on each one of these tabs and then close the lid and the easiest way to do this is just to lay it flat this is the inside so this is the inside the outside of your top and just add your tape now I am adding strong double-sided tape this is the score tape <clears throat> yeah, you don't want to go um, generic on this when it comes to holding the important stuff together. And now I turn it over and I start building my lid. Always ensuring that I am matching everything right. Everything's matching, which is great. I didn't. that one. This is why I always take that added step 
to make sure that the tape is on there right And our very last one is this. Yes. And hello there. Okay. Ah. <laughs> okay. Let's make sure that. We are straight. Alrighty. And there is our lid. So let's take our box, our mini album explosion box to test the lid. Hopefully everything will fall into place. I want this to go like this so that it doesn't cave in. There we go. And ta-da! <laughs> I love it. Now, next step is to decorate this. Okay, um, here's something that I'd like to point out. If you wish, you can go ahead and add some paper here, 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 and here. It will make it snug, more snug. And I think I will be doing that. I don't know. It depends on, on how much time I have. Um, this evening but I may go ahead and add papers on the inside to make this a little bit more snug because I do like my lids to fit snug snugly around the case the next step that we're gonna do is to decorate it that's the fun step In okay so now we're getting ready to decorate the inside and the outside of our mini album explosion box now in order for me to apply the glue onto the metal and have the metal adhere to that, what I'm going to first do is I'm going to use some gesso. This is just plain black gesso that you can pick up at your local crafting shop. And the reason I'm using gesso is because I have found that when applying gesso as a primer to metal your metal will adhere best when you hot glue it to a surface because as we all know see now I'm gonna get my ah <laughs> nails all icky as we all know you can hot glue metal to any surface but the thing about it is is that it'll come off it'll fall apart on you. So I'm applying gesso right there at the center and also in areas where you just cannot see where the gesso is like so and these are going to be the areas that are going to be hot glued to the um, inside and that's that. I really like that bronze finish so I'm not going to be changing that color I'm just applying the gesso on each piece letting it dry so that then I can hot glue it to my papers And of course, ruining my manicure while I'm at it. <laughs> okay. There we go. And you don't need to glob it on just a little bit like this, just enough so that it builds enough of a surface on it. And the reason I chose to use my black gesso instead of the white is because 
since the background and the papers are dark I don't in case I kind of smudge it a little bit on the outside I didn't want any white to show through so there we go okay so I've applied the gesso I'm gonna go ahead and close this back up I'm gonna go wash off this brush real quick that's a thing if you've never used gesso make sure that you wash your brush if you if you want to reuse your brush I have used this brush plenty of times for applying gesso and I wash it off real good and it comes off uh, it dries up really really nicely so I will be right back okay so while the metal is drying I'm going to begin by with decorating the top which by the way whoops <laughs> I decided to go ahead and line the inside I don't know if you can tell uh, you may not be able to tell barely but I used the flip side to this paper which is black and I just added it to it so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add this beautiful trim from chaos for you and by the way I will be leaving a list of all the items that I have used from chaos for you in the description area below so that you can go ahead and, and uh, pay them a visit and get you these very same items if you are going to make design your very own explosion box mini album so let me start in the middle over here it's this wide but what I'm choosing to do is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and fold this over like so notice I'm not cutting it I'm just folding it over and then I will be hot gluing it to the box so let me turn this a little bit this way so that I can see what I'm doing and let me just there you go and I've got my hot glue gun going and we are going to begin right I guess right there <laughs> oh sweet Jesus okay there we go I'm working with this cheap glue in my glue gun so it goes all over the place now I'm going to be stretching it out just a little bit this is a little bit stretchy I'm going to stretch it out just a little bit not too much as I'm working on this Let's see the best way to do this is like this and then like this oh this is horrible horrible glue uh, let's see where's my here we go okay this is why I always begin on the sides because in case I do any boo-boos they're not shown right away <laughs> alrighty let's go ahead and go here and go here and go like so Alrighty, and then I use my metal pick to kind of like press down on it a little bit. Alrighty. See that this glue just, oh, it's one of those deals that I got it Tuesday morning. And the only reason, see, I normally like to work with the Martha Stewart 
glue sticks simply because there's no mess with them and um, everything else is messy 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 for me Now, if there is a magical way of holding down a glue gun and, and swirling it up and everything, I don't do that simply because my wrists just don't want to do that anymore. So that is why I don't. Okay. That took care of a side and a half. <laughs> And we keep moving on. Well, I'll clean all that up later. Look at that. I hate that. See? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was telling you, the only reason I got these cheap glue sticks was because they were long. And at the time that I bought these glue sticks, I was doing a lot of friendship umbrellas, a lot of um, egg cartons on swaps and everything. So I was going through glue sticks like water. And I was constantly having to stop and, and search for more sticks and add them to my glue gun. So when I saw this bag of long glue sticks. They're about what? Maybe um, I would say a foot maybe or 10 inches, something like that. I said, oh, let me go ahead and get those. That way I don't have to switch them, uh, add a new glue stick every five seconds <laughs> or so. And it seemed like a good idea at the time and it still is, except that this particular glue brand of glue stick is horrible 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 I mean it sticks and everything but it's so messy oh my gosh it's messy 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 and yeah the best glue sticks that I have ever worked with have been the Martha Stewart glue sticks they dry clear they oh they're a pleasure to work with. I'll tell you that. They certainly are. Make this one turn into a ball over here. Okay, so we're going to, let's see. I'm going to overlap this because I wanted to end right at this design. I know it's black and you could probably not um, make out what I'm doing, but let me go ahead and cut. Okay, wonderful. And this is going to go right there. Okay. Oops. Here we go. There we go. And there we go. There goes my manicure, huh? <laughs> there we go. Yeah, my daughter talked me into doing um, gel, shellac, I believe is what they call it on my nails, because I really hate acrylic. I hate it, hate it with a passion. I hate the way it feels on my fingertips. To me, they're heavy, and um, I just cannot stand it. So... Oh, I forgot to shut my phone off. I am so sorry. So 
So anyways, we're going to ignore that because I'm in the middle of a tutorial right now. Okay, so here we go. And what I'm going to do over here to close this is I'm going to add a little bit of glue here. See how it all gets on my hands? I have more glue on my nails than I do on this box. <laughs> So we are going to go ahead and apply a little bit of glue here because we are going to close it, close the design right along there and just like that. Let's see. And I think I'm going to leave it hanging like so. Okay, let me go ahead and shut my door because it seems like the kids are out there with their friends. Okay, door shut. So this is what we have. Pretty handsy, huh? F handsy. Pretty fancy. <laughs> Pretty fancy. Fancy schmancy. All righty. So this is, see, I'm going to show you why it takes me forever to craft. Now I'm going to have to close this book. Okay. Book. This box. <laughs> Look at me calling a book a box. Calling a box a box a book. Okay. And I am going to put the lid on it so that okay. I can look at it and admire it and see what else I'm going to do with it. Okay? <laughs> Alrighty. So this is what it's looking like so far. Okay? Now is the time that I'm going to look at several different things and see several different items, I should say, from my design team package to see just which items I'm going to be using in this project and which items I'm going to apply to here. This is beautiful. This one's a little bit bent. There, oh, I bent it back. What do you think? Let me bring it up a little bit. See the lighting. I hope that that's better lighting. I'm sorry if it's not. Okay. What do you think of that? Can you see that well? I'm thinking about maybe this. And I have some flowers. And they also gave this to me. This is extra. I don't know if I'm going to apply this here. Maybe I'll apply it on the inside. But I'm thinking that perhaps I'm going to do one here. And then let's not forget the top. Ooh, maybe I could put this on the top. On the top like so. And have something come up here. Yeah. See, ladies, this is why it takes me forever, forever to craft. And here's a little bit left of this. I have already worked on my second design team project for the month. If I was to... So that's why I only have a little bit left of this. I can't wait to show you my second design team project for the month. It's a beaut. It's a beaut. Okay. And we have the flowers. Now another thing to take into consideration as you are decorating your box is remember, when you're decorating your lid, you may want to decorate your sides, and there's nothing wrong with that, you wanting to decorate your sides, but keep in mind that when this comes off, your sides are going to 
fall down and it all depends on how flat you need these to be so that you can enjoy the album that's inside so keep that in mind so I'm thinking okay let me hold off on that for the moment because I'm still unsure. I have a very good idea of what I want. And see, ladies, do you see why it takes me forever <laughs> to craft? Okay. So what I'm going to do here, and by the way, this is just, I use this to protect my mat. So let me go ahead and open this up, put this down and show you what I'm going to do with these. These are fairly dry now. See? They're dry. And what I decided to do with these is I know that we have already added a tab here, a little rubber tab here for each and every single one of our um what you call it? These right here. In fact, let me go ahead and remove them. And then I thought, you know what, wouldn't it be cool to add tabs to the pages? See, these are our photo mats. We're going to set them to the side for the time being. So I'm thinking, let's take these beautiful metal filigrees. There, you can see them now. And this is a treatment that I've done. Let's take these beautiful metal filigrees and use them as um, paper flips. I don't know what else to call them. So that is what we are going to do. And how I'm going to apply them is one on one side, one on the other. One on one side, one on the other. We're going to stagger them to give them a point of interest. And what's really neat about it is that these over here, they're going right down the middle. So Let's go ahead, and I also got to see my design. Okay, so this is going to go here, 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 and this is going to go like, ow, ow. There we go. Like this. A little bit of glue got on this page, but we're okay. We're okay. Alrighty, that was one. That took care of one. Now the other is going to go right along here. Right along here. Okay. We're going to go like this. Alrighty. So let me go here, 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 and now we are, there we go, there we go, there we go, the next one. Okay, this one's going to be a lot easier. It's going to go here. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. And we are moving along. Yes. And I'm opening this flap because I want to ensure that it doesn't stick to this side. Of that. Oh gosh, look at all these. Okay. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now the next one. <clears throat> The next one is going to go like this. Alrighty.
Isn't it looking so exquisite? I love it. Okay, next one. It's going to go right there like that. Okay. Alrighty. And I'm sorry if I'm not in frame or if my big hands or big arm is not letting you see. <laughs> so sorry. Okay. That's that. And now this one. Now, before you glue the last one on there, oh, look at that. We need to do something. We need to take a preventative measure here. We need to see how far up we can go with this. Because you see, you can't be putting it way up here because then it's going to conflict with the closing of your box. So it's going to have to go right up and around this. Okay. <clears throat> here, 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 here. Let me work fast. And there we go. I hope I didn't put it in crooked. No, okay. Give it a little bit of time to dry before I close it up. That's good. Oh, man. Oh, no, wait. It will close. Okay. Yes, it will close. So it's right there, right at the edge. Okay. I'll tell you what. Yep, we're good. We are good. I just about made it. I just made it. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and put our tabs back in. That's one. Our tabs, I should call it photo mat. Two. Right there, three. Four. Five. And. Six. Isn't that lovely? I love how the pages are turned out, turning out. Look at that. Love, love, love. And of course, if you have it like so, you'll be able to use the metals or use these to turn your pages. Alrighty.
Alrighty, I'm happy with how this came out. Look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I will have to take pictures outside to show it all. But I just love the way that came out. Now I have a strip of gold bling from my stash. And I'm thinking about applying it there. Because I like the bling. And scissors. thinking maybe do a little cut out and put something here but I'll hold off on that right now I don't think I should put anything here because there's really not that much room and it'll leave room for a picture if need be or just scribble some stuff on there so this is what we're looking at so far okay so we got that and now for the lid I think what I'm gonna do is okay so now that I have applied some gesso this is the white gesso on my metal pieces I am ready to work on decorating the top. Thank you. 
Isn't that the cutest thing? So now, let me get some of my items out of the way. So here we have, this is what the top looks like. Just got to clean around the edges. And there we go. Now, if you want to build a platform for this, I made a lid the same exact size as this, the bottom. You could put a platform. And there you have your platform. So I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. What do you think of our Tall Explosion Box mini album? It came out fantastic. I will leave a list of the items that I have used from ks4u.net in the description area below and I will go ahead and leave a link to their store as well. Um, the paper collection that we have used in this Explosion Box mini album is the Graphic 45 Artisan Style Collection and as you saw everything was mounted on black cardstock. So I hope that you have found this tutorial helpful and uh, don't forget to leave me a comment. Let me know what else you would like to see on my channel. You said more tutorials. Here they are. And uh, yeah, go ahead and add it to your personal playlist. It is a lengthy video, a lengthy tutorial, and that way you can pull it up anytime you wish for later reference when you want to make one of these. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, comment, thumbs up, share my videos, and I will see y'all real soon, okay? Uh, enjoy your week. <laughs> Bye now.